Hello, welcome. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to the Nikon F3T, the Titan or Titanium as people call it, and how it compares to a standard Nikon F3. Now, do stay with me because I need your help because I have a few uh, dilemmas. <laughs> First, I'm going to show you the differences side by side to a Nikon F3. There is information online about this, but it's not until you see the cameras kind of close up that you can kind of make the decision is it actually worth buying a Nikon F3T which is a more expensive camera or do you just go with a standard Nikon F3 or even I guess one of the other versions. Okay so with the lenses removed can you actually see any difference? Both cameras have got the high point of viewfinder attached but if we take a closer look first with the F3, the F3 has got a gloss black paint finish on the top the bottom here around the lens surround and also on the back plate as you can see here so note that and we're going to compare the neck on F3T however it's got a matte finish can you see on the top plate the surround the base plate and also of course on the back as well so from the information I can find, the Nikon F3T is pretty much identical to the F3 on the inside. But on the outside you've got a titanium top plate, titanium bottom plate, titanium surround. And this bit is also titanium on the back plate. The easy way to tell, there's actually two different Nikon F3Ts. There's the black paint which came after. Then the early one is a uh, chrome or champagne finish it was called which is basically bare metal so you've got silver here silver on the bottom silver surround and silver on the back and that shows that this bit's titanium because you can see it's silver on the champagne version i'll bring up a photo to show you so other than the fact that this one is matte and the other one isn't are there actually any other differences is it worth spending the extra money to get the t I'm unsure. <laughs> Just to mention another difference is the the prism is also titanium. You can see that's uh, matte and that one is gloss and again if you see on the champagne one the top of the print prism is um, silver coloured which shows that's where it got changed from standard to uh, titanium. So both have the same HP finder, high point finder which looks like this on the back. The main difference is this one is slightly lighter than the standard one, although the kind of the internals are the same. So if I take off the prism, of course a tight fit, that's what it looks like from the top of the camera. So the reason I bought the Nikon F3, my first one, was because I wanted a waist level viewfinder camera. Um, let, me, let me give you the full story so you know why I've ended up with two Nikon F3s. So if you saw my first Nikon F3 video, I can link it at the end. I bought a Nikon F3 with a waist level viewfinder. The only reason to get this Nikon in addition to all my other Nikon cameras is because I wanted a waist level viewfinder shooting experience. This Nikon F3 came with the E screen, which is like a grid with no uh, split prism in the center. I really wanted to try or get both a K screen, which is a standard screen, and also a um, standard HP viewfinder just to try out. So I looked online and I thought well I may as well look for an F3T just to see how much they are and I found this one for a pretty good price with the HP finder that I was looking for and the K screen which has got the split prism as you can see. As a Leica user I find these screens much easier to focus because I like the split pres the split uh, image in the center, split prism, split image in the center. So my excuse was, right, I'll buy an F3T, I get the screen and I get the prism. I thought I can use two F3s as my setup, the F3T with the prism viewfinder and then the standard F3 which I already had with the waist level viewfinder. As so, if I can get it fit on the screen. <laughs> now the problem was I booked a trip to the Lisbon to shoot the two Nikon cameras side by side and just to have some fun doing street photography. Sadly, this camera, the F3T, got kind of stuck in the post, so it didn't arrive in time for the flight, and so I couldn't take it. So for that reason, I needed to take another Nikon camera instead, and now this is where things get complicated. 
I didn't have the SVT, so it moved that to one side. And instead of all the Nikons I've got, which is quite a few, I think I've got about eight, my camera of choice was a Nikon FE2. This has already got a built-in prism, and so I was like, right, I can use that for my prism shots when I needed to say shoot vertical. It's already got a built-in case screen, so that ticks that box. And then I could use the standard F3 camera for, with the waist level viewfinder for kind of horizontal shots. So I took both of these cameras to Lisbon a few days ago. If you saw the Voigtlander 28mm 1.5 video, you see a bit of footage showing me holding these cameras. But I'm still waiting for the colour film to be developed and then I'm going to share a big video showing all the photos that shot with these two cameras. Now, where it gets complicated and the point of this video is, I think this Nikon FE2 does all I ever want from a Nikon camera if I'm using a fixed prism. Therefore, if I move this to one side, bring the SVT in, do I actually need a Nikon FVT if I've already got a Nikon FE2? So as you can see, the Nikon FE2 is shorter, it's lighter, and it's got more functions, which is crazy. Well, there's more useful functions, shall we say. So if I put it like that, you can see the functions. So the additional benefits of the FE2, other than the cheaper price and lower weight, is it has 4 thousandths of a second maximum shutter speed, which is great if you use fast lenses such as a, a 1.2 or a 1.4. The Nikon F3T has only got 2 thousandths of a second maximum shutter speed, the same as the F3. The FE2 has got 250 flash sync speed and a proper dedicated hot shoe. The Nikon FE cameras have a very complicated kind of hot shoe design on the over the film rewind crank, so you have to get special adapters and it's a bit of a pain basically in, in modern times it's just nice to stick a brand new modern say Godox trigger on top of my Nikon FE2 and shoot it exactly the same as if I was using a modern digital like an SL camera or like an M camera for example. The FE2 is better for flash, it's better for fast lenses, it's smaller and lighter for travel, it's cheaper for like the economy value and I'm like eh, do I actually need this FE3T or shall I just send it back? Um, as I say, the reason for buying it was to get the, the prism and then what happened, oh, I didn't finish the story. So basically the person that sent me the FE original then sent me the F3 HP viewfinder in the post and said, oh, I didn't send you this in the first parcel. So now I've already got the HP finder, so I don't necessarily need this one. I've tried the case screen and I've realised that the case screen doesn't have the grid that you get on the E screen, which is on this camera which is better for composing kind of wide shots and say city shots, which is what I was doing in Lisbon. And it kind of complements the FE2. If I want the smallest lighted setup, I can take the Nikon FE2, or actually if you watch my video on the Nikon FG20, I can link that at the end. That's my smallest setup. So if I'm cycling and I need to crazy small set, lightweight setup. So in normal circumstances, the FE2 is a my small setup but it doesn't give me the waist level viewfinder because this is fixed. If I need a waist level, viewfinder, waist level viewfinder and a prism viewfinder, I could just take my F3 with two viewfinders. So I can take the, the prism viewfinder, the high point, and I can take the waist level viewfinder and then I'm covered in all areas with one camera if I take, say, only the F3. What I found when I was shooting in Lisbon is every time I was using the F3, because the streets were narrow and kind of long, I kept wanting to shoot portrait orientation. I'll mention this in the next video. And so I found the way some of viewfinder really, really frustrating when you're trying to do uh, portrait orientation photos with a prism with a waist level finder because it's back to front. If this had come in time for Lisbon, that would have been so much easier than just the F3. So. I guess what I'm trying to say is please comment below what do you think FE2 or Nikon F3T or Nikon F3 basically all three of them after kind of real world experience using the FE2 next to the F3 I think those two cameras are more than enough and both have got their own advantages these two cameras as I say are identical on the inside this one's supposed to be I think it's 40 grams lighter, I'll write it on the screen. In real world use they feel pretty much identical, you really can't tell the difference. I do like the matte finish of the F3T, but because this one's a slightly more marked camera, it's not quite as pretty as it probably could be. So yeah, that's my dilemma. Comment below what do you think, what is the best Nikon F3 camera? 
this was cheap for an F3T, but it's still more than two, two and a half times more expensive than this. And they do take exactly the same photos and they feel exactly the same weight. So I don't really see the benefit of keeping the, the T. But yeah, let me know, comment below. And if you've got, if there's any love for the Nikon FE2, also let me know. I think this camera is amazing. And if for those of you that can't afford the Nikon M3A, I think the Nikon FE2 is better. I think the light meter display is much, much nicer in an FE2 than an F3. If you don't know, the FE2 has got a needle display the same as the FE, which I've also got, where the F3 and the SVT have got like a modern um, digital display LCD. And feel free to hit subscribe if you want to see full videos showing the photos from the F3 and the FE2. I shot two rolls of black and white, four rolls of uh, three and a bit rolls of colour. So lots of photos to come. And yeah, see you soon. Thanks for watching. And as always, a huge thanks to my amazing patrons.